Hey folks, I got a few examples for you of uh, using Lorentz force. So um, I'll try to get through two or three examples here. So the first one is, let's say we have a singly charged sodium ion. So that's Na plus, okay? And let's say that ion is moving at 1% the speed of light. And that a uh, singly positively charged sodium ion enters a magnetic field that is three Teslas, right? So let's first draw it out real quick. So let's say uh, for the sake of argument, I got a magnetic field pointing into the page. There it is. All right. And then I've got my positive charge. There he is right there. And let's say at this moment, he's moving to the right. Okay, so which way will the force acting on him be? Well, if you use your right hand rule, you point your hand to the right, you curl it into the page of the field, your thumb will point up, so the force will be up, which means later on, he'll be moving upward, okay? But now which way is the force acting on him? Well, if you point your hand up, you curl your fingers into the page, well, now your, your thumb points left, and that force is always going to be perpendicular to his motion which means he's going to follow a circle. So we're all we're going to find a couple things. We're going to find the force acting on that little sodium ion. We're going to find the acceleration of that little sodium ion and we're going to follow the or, or calculate the radius of his path, okay? All right. So, um force is QV cross B. Now, the way I've drawn it, the velocity is completely perpendicular to the magnetic field. So it's technically it's QVB sine to theta, but theta is 90 degrees, sine to theta is 1. So we're just doing QVB here. Singly charged. What that means is you've stripped one electron from the sodium, ion, sodium atom. So the charge, uh, if I've subtracted one electron, the charge is positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Okay, so that is our Q. Our V is 1% the speed of light. If you, if you look up the speed of light, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So 1% of that would be 3 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. And then the B I gave you was 3 Teslas. Um, oh, pardon me. So if I plug those in, um, I get a force, a very tiny force, 1.44 uh, times 10 to the negative 12th newtons. Now, it's a very tiny force because it's a tiny particle. Uh, for the acceleration, that's force over mass. Okay, Newton's second law, force equals ma. Uh, we're st we still use that. So our force is what we just got, the mass. Okay, a sodium atom, the most common isotope, has um, 11 protons. Okay, so 11, and the, all sodium atoms have 11 protons. That, that's a given. And the most common isotope, has 12 neutrons. Now, the mass of a proton and mass of a neutron are about the same. And so we have 23 of those little particles in there. So we've got 23 times the mass of a proton slash neutron. The mass of a proton and a mass of a neutron is approximately 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. So if you take our force that we just got divided by that crazy small mass, uh, we get a big acceleration. I get about 3.75 uh, times 10 to the 13th meters per second per second. Now, that's a radial acceleration inward. So he's, he's not speeding up or slowing down. He's just turning, okay? What's the radius of the circle that he's going to make? So we know that net force equals ma, okay? The force is QVB uh, equals M. And then what's the acceleration of anything going in a circle? Well, that's just V squared over R. And that's there's where our radius comes into play. Now, uh, one of the Vs drops out here. And if you rearrange this for R, you're going to get MV, which is not an accident. That's the momentum of the particle, uh, divided by QB. Okay, And we have all those uh, values. The mass was this right there. The velocity was that right there. The charge was right there. 
and the magnetic field is 3. So uh, if you plug all those in, I get 0.24 meters, which is 24 centimeters. So he will make a 24 centimeter radius circle. All right. All right. So there's one example. Um, the next example I have for you is a three-dimensional example. So this was a 2D example, right? Well, let's do a 3D example. Let's say I've got a charge, and that charge is 3 coulombs, all right? And let's say the velocity of that particle at this moment is 2 in the i-hat direction, minus 3 in the j-hat direction, plus 0 in the k-hat direction. And let's say he flies into a magnetic field that has the following direction. 1 i-hat plus 2 j-hat minus 4 k-hat uh, teslas. Okay. Oh, and the, the velocity is in meters per second. Okay. Determine the force acting on the particle. Well, force is equal to q v cross b. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do V cross B first, and then I'll multiply that answer by 3 to get our force. Okay. So to do Q cross B, or V cross B, um, you might recall, we've done this in my class before, we have I, J, K. Uh, the V is 2, negative 3, and 0, and the B is 1, 2, and negative 4. And to do um, the I direction, you're doing J cross K. So we're doing J cross K here. And so you got negative 3, 0, 2, negative 4. And then we do a minus. And I, I, when I did cross proc the first time last semester, we explained that ad nauseum why it's minus. Um, and we're going to do the J hat, which is I cross K. And that would be negative J. So that's why there's negative sitting there. And so if I cross the J column out, I get a 2, a 0, a 1, and a negative 4. And then plus, and then um, I cross J uh, gives you K. And so you get a 2, negative 3, 1, and a 2. And then for each of these, you'd go this way is plus and this way is minus, okay, for each of these. So V cross B is, okay. So our first term would be negative 3 times negative 4 is 12, minus 2 times 0 is 0, and then minus, and then we do 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, minus 1 times 0, so that's 0, and that's j hat, and then plus, and then 2 times 2 is 4, and then minus 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, and that's k hat. So our v cross b is... 12, oops, sorry, 12 i hat plus 8 j hat plus 7 k hat. And our force is q times v cross b. So our force, if q is 3, we just triple each of these things. And you get 36 i hat plus 24 j hat plus... 21 k hat uh, newtons. So that would be the force acting on that little charged particle running through that field. Okay. Um, in the next video, uh, we'll talk about uh, a wire um, in a magnetic field, and we'll throw some other forces at you on that. All right. I hope that that video was helpful, and thank you very much.